I'm experiencing the goosebumps right now because we're going to have ourselves uh, NBA Finals. See, when you love the game of basketball the way that I do, this is what you live for. This is what you live for right here. It's Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. It's against Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And why do I say that? Because the Minnesota Timberwolves, an elite defense all year, the number one defense in the National Basketball Association, who put the clamps on the Denver Nuggets, the reigning defending NBA champions at the time, in such a manner in the first half of game two, in such a manner in the second half of game seven, that I said to myself, my God, they can win it all. They could win it all. We see the Ant-Man ascending and elevating his level of play to such a degree that it warranted comparison at that age anyway, the tender age of 22, to the likes of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. We did all of this. And then Luka Doncic showed up in Minnesota last night in Minneapolis and bust their living ass. Ladies and gentlemen, when you love the game of basketball, it's moments like this that you're loving it. So Luka Doncic shoots 7 of 21 from the field in game four. He's, he doesn't have a good game. The Dallas Mavericks end up losing the game and not being able to sweep the Minnesota uh, T-Wolves on their home turf and have to travel back to Minnesota for the game five. And you got guys like Jalen McDaniels, Talking smack about how they can run the table and, 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 and they only really had one good game against us. We can take and we think we can just run the table and win the rest of the games. And Luka Doncic came out in the first quarter. And again, it's worth repeating and reiterating with the fervor that I'm going to do it. Bust their living ass. Yes, he did. That's what he did. Okay. He comes out one three after another. Penetrating into the lane, shooting fall away jump shots, doing it at his place. Looks slow as a snail half the time. Doesn't matter. Can't stop him. He's a legit 6'7", a legit 240 to 250 pounds. Does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And it was nothing, absolutely positively nothing that the Minnesota Timberwolves could do about it. And so we're sitting there watching all of this. Look at Doncic scored. He, did you know he outscored the Minnesota Timberwolves by himself in the first quarter? He had 20 in the first quarter. Did you know that when he hit a three for his 17th point of the quarter, he was screaming? And that was the only noise you heard in the arena? Did you see him looking over at Minnesota's entire bench and telling them what he was going to do to them, how he was going to do it to them, and then did it? Did you know that when Anthony Edwards guarded him last night, he didn't miss a shot? Did you know that he abused Jaden McDaniels? I mean, you can't make this up. And here's the beauty of it, ladies and gentlemen. Not only did Luka do that en route to a 36-point performance and winning the Western Conference Finals MVP Award, Most Outstanding Player, forget all of that for a second. After he did it, and keep in mind, he scored 12 points in the first two minutes and 53 seconds of the game. I'm going to repeat that. In the first two minutes and 53 seconds of the game, Luka Doncic had 12 points. Came out swinging. Came out drilling threes. Came out screaming. Came out flickering his fingers like, whoo, I'm hot. I'm Y'all going to get it tonight. And the Minnesota Timberwolves had no answer. No answer whatsoever. And so we look at that. And then to make matters worse, to make matters worse, Luca took a break to start the second quarter. And when he took a break to start the second quarter, he said, Kyrie, it's your turn. And Kyrie proceeds to score 15 points in the second quarter, hitting all five of his shots, penetrating into the teeth of the defense, getting in the lane, you know, layups, layups off the glass, fall away, jump shot, step back threes. I mean, jab, step three, busting their living ass. That's what he did. And I, I got to tell you something right now. I, I don't know what to say. Because, again, I thought Minnesota would win the series at the beginning of the season. I thought Minnesota had them in seven games. I thought it would take seven games, but I thought they had them because I thought it was a matchup problem for them. Okay? And I thought that it was something that they had to be mindful of because I looked at Minnesota saying, Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, you got the size. Dallas didn't care. Gafford and Lively did their job. 
P.J. Washington hit jump shots, hit, did his job. Derek Jones, as athletic as he is, doing his job. And then, of course, there's Luke and Kyrie, who's one of the most unstoppable backcourts in the history of the, basket, of the game of basketball. And so now, you see what they see. And all of a sudden, we're hearing some of this noise. Remember, Kyrie Irving had 36 points as well. Remember, he had five assists, didn't have a single turnover last night. Remember that. Remember that in this series, Luka and Kyrie outscored Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns 59 to 44 points per game. Combined shots, 43.2% for Luka and Kyrie, 37.4%. Obviously, they shot 48 to 41% from the field, 41 to 32% from three point range. Last night, they combined for 72 points on 57% shooting, 10 of 20 from threes. That's 50%. This is what they've done. Carl Anthony Towns, three-point shooting in the conference finals. In the game, four went four or five for 80%. In the four losses, four of 28, 17%. 17%. This is the self-proclaimed best shooting big man in the game of basketball. Love Carl Anthony Towns. Didn't handle his business the way one, one, one would surmise. Which leaves a whole bunch of people questioning whether they, what are you going to do with Minnesota now that they're on their way home? What are you going to do to get Anthony Edwards some additional help? The mindset is keep the team intact. Don't do anything. I say hold on now. Hold your horses. You got to probe. You got to investigate. You got to gauge what you can get for Carl Anthony Towns. You can't just summarily dismiss that. Carl Anthony Towns is a 6'11 cat that can shoot. And I get that. But when you consider his value, what could you potentially get for Carl Anthony Towns if you were willing to move him? I think that's something to think about. If I'm the Golden State Warriors, why wouldn't I be interested in Carl Anthony Towns? I got a 6'11 dude that can defend post players but can step away from the basket and shoot. On a team where you got a shooter like Steph Curry. And you'll probably keep Klay Thompson. I got to think about those things. Although if I'm Golden State, I'm talking to Oklahoma City because Oklahoma City's got a bevy of picks. And if, Kyle, if Klay Thompson was on that team with Shea Gilgis Alexander, who the hell knows what could happen? I got to think about all those things. I'm not saying to trade Carl Anthony Towns. I'm not saying to do that at all. I'm simply saying you have to investigate. You got to probe. You got to see what you can get for him, what his value truly is before you just close that door. Because who's to say what you could get for him to pair with Anthony Edwards? That's something worth considering, but we can talk about that another day. The Dallas Mavericks are going to the NBA Finals. That's what they're doing. And because they're going to the NBA Finals, we're going to have a thriller. So I'll wait to get into all of that.